This video is for students of macroeconomics and it's about the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, the ADAS model. The ADAS model is the most difficult and important model of macroeconomics. Students hate it and teachers love it. And in my videos I am going to make it simpler and easier for you. I already recorded a full video on this topic. A 14 minute video! But sometimes you don't have 14 minutes. Sometimes you need a quick recap of the topic. And that is why I am giving you this video. In this video you can learn the ADAS model in just 3 minutes. Do you remember the supply and demand model? Price and quantity, supply and demand. And now we are going to take this model, supply and demand of one product and apply it to the entire economy, to all goods and services produced. Supply of one product will become aggregate supply of all goods and services produced in this country. And demand of one product will become aggregate demand for all goods and services in this economy. And the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model will look like this. On a vertical axis we put the price, the general price level. It's the general price, the average price for all goods and services produced in this country. For example, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, or the GDP deflator. And on the horizontal axis we put the gross domestic product, the GDP, denoted by the capital letter Y. The AD curve, the aggregate demand curve, shows how many goods and services people and businesses and governments and foreigners buy at each price level. And what people buy is called consumption, what businesses buy is called investments, what government buys is government spending, and what foreigners buy is net exports. And the C plus I plus G plus NX does the expenditure approach to the GDP. Now, aggregate supply. Here we are going to have not one, but two aggregate supply curves the long-run aggregate supply and the short-run aggregate supply. And the long-run aggregate supply is a vertical line. It's vertical because it's fixed at the level of potential output. And it's fixed at this level because prices don't affect the long-run GDP. And what's behind the long-run aggregate supply? The four factors of productivity. And the second supply curve is the short-run aggregate supply curve. And just like a normal supply curve slopes upward, the short-run aggregate supply curve also slopes upward. And what behind the short-run aggregate supply are the same factors of productivity. And one more factor input prices, prices for production inputs, for example, the price for the most important input, labor, which is the wage. And when all curves intersect each other, that intersection is called the long-run equilibrium. At the long-run equilibrium, the economy produces its potential output at the equilibrium price level. If nothing happens, an economy will stay the long-run equilibrium for years, for many years, for thousands of years, again, if nothing happens. But in the real life, something always happens. People spend more, technology improves, businesses ruin environment, stuff happens. In economics, we call such events shocks, demand shocks and supply shocks. How to show the demand shocks and supply shocks on the ADAS graph? You can learn that in my next videos. So stay tuned and thank you for watching and learning.